I wanted to talk on what is commonly referred to as the um, market diffusion. What does market diffusion mean? I use it a lot and I realize that people probably don't understand what it means unless if you were an uh, entrepreneur or involved in startups or in business school, then the term market diffusion will mean something to you. But if you're you know, a doctor or you work in a, what is this guy doing? Freaking, this woman is going down a one way. She's going the wrong way, I've done it. So she's trying to get out. And uh, anyway, that was exciting. I got a car coming right at me. So market diffusion re uh, relates to how quickly a product or service diffuses to market. Now, you probably heard of you know a two percent growth, right? Um, that two percent growth is actually the market diffusion of whatever it is. So if you have a mar you know a, a market penetration or or uh, consumer growth. And it kind of, in, in many respects, it's kind of like, um, if you think of it, something you do know is compounded interest rate, right? Compounded interest rate is really exponential because you're getting interest rate on top of it. So you have a 2% interest rate compounded. Every time you have interest, you're getting that interest added in there. It's not the kind of interest rate you want, right? Well, market diffusion is an exponential function too because it's always and, and, the, and the, the 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 image that you want to think of is this bell curve right this bell curve it goes up like this and under the market diffusion there's different there's different uh, um, segments so when you first start a product let's think of Twitter because you have on those Twitter and you launch it basically everyone said it was stupid it was useless there was just no future in it why would you want to type 140 words of text right and um, the only people who got on it were the innovators the innovators and the innovators tend to be folks that want to figure out what it is that you're doing so they can copy and improve on it most of the, most of the time right so the innovators get on it and then, then because the innovators get on it, they have a, a core group of people who follow them or do what they do. So these guys are trendsetters. They're called the early adapters. So innovators represent only 2.5% of the population. Early adapters, 13.5%, right? Then you have early majority. So you can think of early majority market diffusion. Um, Innovator market diffusion, early adapter market diffusion. The next one would be late adapter. And each of the early adapter and late adapter are 35%. Okay? They're broken up even. So and so you see this exponential growth, right? Of diffusion of the product or whatever. So and then there's always that eleven percent or so or maybe it's 13%, I can't remember what it is, called laggards. And these folks will never buy your product, will never do it. Um, and you can apply this market diffusion to a lot of, it's, 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 it's a law, it's a law of diffusion of innovation, right? Uh, there's been so much work on this that they know that things will grow, everything has this bell curve. If you look at Wikipedia growth rate, if you look at pretty much everything, Facebook, all of it has this bell curve. It all comes down to this, 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 uh, um, I don't know if it's calculus or whatever, this bell curve, right? Law of market diffusion. Now, what, how does this relate to pesticides and everything else? Well, let me explain that. So now that you understand the diffusion of innovation, the pesti pesticides were innovated in the 1940s and, and got a lot of funding because of Korea and Vietnam. And they used pesticides predominantly and weed killers, right? DDT. 
was used to basically kill mosquitoes and stop malaria and it, you know and there's the famous pictures of the guy you know basically dousing himself with DDT and saying hey it's safe kind of like the smoker the guy from you know all everything's the same from uh, the, the guy who smoked uh, 100 cigarettes a day and said listen I'm as healthy as a, a whatever you know ox guy ended up dying um, ultimately in the 1940s that would have been the early adapters people started using like what's this pesticide does it really help I'm not sure you know and all of a sudden it killed some of the bugs and everything else I mean it killed a lot of the bugs and it's like wow all of a sudden I can get more product and some early adapters got on then you know early majority uh, late you know um, uh, late majority so in the 19 so basically by the 80s probably the market fusion for pesticides was was pretty much done well in the 1990s they introduced a new product very expensive back then systemic pesticides and uh, ultimately these systemic pesticides were very different than the ones traditionally used because the ones traditionally used were not water water soluble um, and uh, basically it would wash off a good rain or whatever it'd be gone right so it's like hey I spent all this money on pesticides but you know what? As soon as it rained, it'd be gone. It'd be out in the ocean, poisoning the fish. But it'd get so diluted in the ocean that it wouldn't even matter, right? Because it'd get diffused. Well, in the 1990s, they came up with this systemic pesticides. Uh, I think Purdue University played a significant role in the innovation of, of systemic pesticides. Someone told me that. Um, and... Um, Ultimately, what makes them different is these are water water soluble, which means they, they go into the plant. So, over the last, basically from the mid 1990s when they were introduced to, you know, now these pesticides um, have now become late majority market diffused, which means now. 90% of corn and wheat and a lot of these other major crops, soybeans, everything else, are systemically treated with this, with this pesticide, which means in the plant. So the moment a bird eats the rice or eats, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm thinking rice might be systemic. They may be using systemic pesticides on rice because the birds are dying. And they could be dying because of the worms or they could be dying because they're eating the pesticide that's on the, you know, in the kernel. Um, and if it doesn't kill them, what it's doing is it's, it's, it's um, reducing testosterone and increasing estrone develop, you know, in, in animals. And that's plenty of research. Just have to type frogs, pesticide on YouTube and you can watch the talks on that. Um, and um, ultimately, um, what's happened is now um, because patents usually last about 15 years well patents do last 15 years so if you do the math 1990s let's say 1995 right five years that'd be 2000 2010 um, so that was but uh, you know so by 2010 now all these patents are gone people can innovate on their innovation on their technology patents only give you 15 years of market control and now everyone's making generic all these chemical companies are jumping in and you know all over and are cranking out the systemic pesticide and understand systemic pesticides are are getting in everything right in our water table everything um, you know it they're it's a liquid. I mean, they're dealing with molecules. Molecules can get filtered out of the soil. Um, it's it's not granular, right? It's not it's not bacteria. Bacteria kind of gets sorted out through clay and other things, right? So now what's happening is what we're doing is compromising the water quality. As a result of compromising the water quality, and there's plenty of research that shows, you know, in infamous in, in oh, I can't worry the word very small amounts so small you can't even detect it with our instrumentation will affect bees they've done studies on this right Be, why is that well it's simple because 
if you do the research, you'll learn that insects don't have a detox gene. We have a detox gene, which means we can take a lot of bullshit in our body. We do it all the time called alcohol or pot or marijuana, you know, marijuana pot, same thing. You know, um, we can take these drugs, LSD, all this stuff, it doesn't kill us, right? Why? Because our body can detox. Well, guess what? Insects can't detox. And as a result of insects not detoxing, also these, these drugs also uh, target, and there's another reason why they target, they target, these chemicals target the um, um, neuro, uh, their neurotoxins. Because the reason why they have drugs that target neurotoxins basically is very simple because worms don't have any neuro functionality, right? They're very simple. And they, you don't want to be targeting something that's going to harm the worms, right? So worms become, as you watch my video, toxic bombs to birds or, you know, um, chemical, you know, chemical castration of animals. Of, I'm sure we're going to see the end of, I mean, moles and everything else, um, which I'm sure to farmers and stuff, oh, we're killing the moles, good. We're killing the birds that eat the seed, good. But you see, we live in an ecosystem, which means all of a sudden you don't have the birds eating the deer tick, and the deer ticks carry disease. And all of a sudden you got more people with Parkinson type syndromes, and you know, there's an epidemic because we have deer ticks now rampaging across the United States because we don't have the birds to take care of the ticks. You know, um, it's we live in a very, 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 very sensitive ecosystem and when you mess up one thing, you mess up the other thing. I mean, the biggest thing is, you know, when you've got, a, you've got an insect population of bees and the majority of which, there's over 20, 30,000 species of bees, most of them are not honeybees, okay? <laughs> honeybees make up less than 1% of bees globally, right? You kill these guys, which we're doing, there are no, the bees are pretty much 90%, I'm saying over 90% of bees are gone in Japan because of the use of pesticides and, and because we are compromising the quality of our, our water, which is integral to, to insects. Um, then ultimately we have a much bigger problem and the bigger problem is this because all of a sudden when you've got you know two-thirds of the food we eat is directly responsible I'm talking about the chocolate you eat is cocoa it comes from a bean the tea you drink they use lots of pesticides on that by the way so if you're drinking a lot of green tea guess what it may be healthy but you're getting it you're getting a super dosage of pesticides um, you know uh, your coffee. So all of these different things require bees. The other thing too is a lot of these, you know, the, the, the good news is we'd still be able to get fruit. The thing is, is that you're going to have a, a reduction of 90%. Bees increase the productivity of plants by 90%. There's, 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 uh, you can, uh, you know, look at the research on that. So the reason why we have such small melons and stuff like that in Japan is because we don't have, I believe, is because we don't have the pollinations, right? Melons are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Fruit are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And what's going to happen is the cost is going to go up, right? So you're going to see a skyrocketing of costs of fruit and other things taking place. Um, you probably already felt that they're already going up, right? Things like honey will become a luxury item that you just... You, you get once a year or something. You can't have every day. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and all of this comes down to one thing, the market diffusion of pesticides. And let's wrap this back up because my talk is about the diffusion, right? So when you start understanding the market diffusion of pesticides and realize that systemic pesticides now are at late majority, Remember, you got the innovation stage, which have been in the 1990s. Then the early adapters would be late 1990s, right? Then there was the, probably in the 2000s, was when um, early majority and late 2000s, 2007, and that's when we start seeing bees crash, signifies the point when pesticides became 
late majority market diffused, right? I think so. I think that that point right there when the bees start crashing is because of usage and you know of um, you know um, degrading our water quality. So most people are focused on all oh, pesticides and bees getting the pollen. You got to think it's not pollen, people. It's water, water integrity, water integrity, and most of the water out there, like we wouldn't swim in our river, you know. 50 years ago, they would be swimming in that river, but not now. You just don't, you don't swim. A lot of lakes and other things, you just can't swim in them anymore. Um, we have so much crap going into the, our, our water and, and destroying the quality that it's inf affecting everything. So, I hope you enjoyed this talk. Um, you know, it's kind of long, 15 minutes. I don't you know, I don't do talks on Found Up TV that much anymore because if I'm over 15 minutes, I can't upload it. I have unlimited talk time on Edgewood Org channel, so that's why I do talks there. You know, I have over a thousand videos now up there for everything from startups to education to, you know, do you name it. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope that you'll, you get pleasure from watching my talks and, you know, I do them. I always joke, I do talks because when I have Alzheimer's, I'll be able to look back and experience, go back through my life and experience everything. Um, that's kind of what I, I joke. But um, anyway, or maybe I sometimes say oh, I have so many talks because, you know, when, when um, singularity happens, T-singularity, technology singularity happens and they have computers that are so smart, they'll be able to look at my talks and uh, the computer will just be able to si simulate me and I, Michael Trout will be running around talking with my points of view and everything else. I could take all those talks that I've done and everything and and I'll be there in a classroom or ask Michael what he thinks. So in a way, um, maybe a way to live forever. I hope my, my, you know, my, my sons will enjoy my talks, my, their, their children and children. I, th I hope that you know, my ancestors from now look back and say, you know what, Michael was right and no one was listening, you know, um, and, um, and he was here in Japan pioneering where no one else is trying to save bees and create habitats and other things, you know, um, spending his money to do that because he knows it's the right thing to do. I wish that YouTube was a thing where I could just inject what I know right into your head without you having to watch all my bullshit talks. That'd be nice. <laughs>